In this video, I will show you how to solve the Alex problem called using the conditions of spontaneity to deduce the signs of delta H and delta S. So on this, you're going to have a, a, a reaction or a situation. It'll be described right here. And then you will be asked to predict whether delta H is positive or negative and whether delta S is positive or negative. And you're also going to have an option on these drop down menus to choose unknown. So if you can't tell from the provided information, you will be able to just say, I don't know. To answer these questions, we're going to be basing this off of delta G, or partly we're going to be basing it off of delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. We're also going to be basing it a little bit off of just a description of the problem. So we need to remember things like if we have a negative delta H, that means the reaction is exothermic. If we have a positive delta H, that means the reaction is endothermic. If we have a negative delta S, that means that the system is becoming more ordered. If we have a positive delta S, that means the system is becoming more random. And if we have a negative delta G, that means that the reaction is spontaneous. And if we have a positive delta G, that means that the reaction is non-spontaneous. So let's take a look at the, the first question, the fir or the first reaction. This says the reaction is spontaneous only above 76 degrees, but it proceeds at a slower rate. So if it's giving you information about it is slower or faster at a certain temperature, you actually don't need any of that information to answer this question. So ignore all of that, anything that has to do with going slower or going faster. All that matters here is that the reaction is spontaneous above 76 degrees. It's spontaneous once the temperature gets high enough. So looking over here at our delta G equation, we're going to be basing this answer off of information that we have about temperature. When the temperature gets high enough, the reaction becomes spontaneous. So when the temperature gets high, the reaction becomes spontaneous. That means that this term is favorable for spontaneity. Uh, increasing the randomness of a system is favorable to spontaneity. So when our temperature gets really high and we're multiplying it by this positive delta S, which would increase the randomness, that's gonna make the overall reaction spontaneous. So for this, the value of delta S is gonna be a positive. Again, that is because we know that making the temperature high is gonna have a good effect on the spontaneity of the reaction. Because this reaction is not always spontaneous, it's not is only spontaneous at high temperatures, that tells us that delta H is actually not helpful in making the reaction spontaneous. That means that delta H is endothermic. Endothermic means that this is endothermic reactions go along with the reaction being non-spontaneous. Just like exothermic reactions will go along with the reaction being spontaneous or they help the reaction be spontaneous. Let's take a look at our next situation. And this says, crystallization of a pure compound is spontaneous only below 49 degrees C. The way that I want you to think about this is just that this is a reaction. This, whatever the process is, it doesn't matter if it's telling you it's crystallization or whatever, the reaction or the process or whatever is spontaneous only at low temperatures spontaneous at low temperatures. So that means if the temperature gets too high, the reaction is not spontaneous anymore. Um, so that means that if the temperature gets big and we're multiplying it by delta S, we're multiplying it by a type of delta S that makes the reaction non-spontaneous. Um, that would be a negative delta S. Non, a non-spontaneous um, ordering the system is consistent with the reaction becoming non-spontaneous. So for this system, the sign of delta S needs to be negative because if the temperature gets too high and we multiply it by this negative delta S, everything becomes non-spontaneous. The reaction at low temperatures is spontaneous. So if you have a little number over here that's not having a big effect on delta S, that means that delta H is taking over in terms of dictating spontaneity. And that means that we have a negative delta H for this system. And the last one, it says the reaction is always spontaneous, but it proceeds faster. Remember I told you anything that is telling you about going faster or going slower, just ignore it. The reaction is always spontaneous. Always spontaneous, that's going to be a negative delta H. Always spontaneous, that's going to be a positive delta S.